In your concept catalog, let's take a look at frequency, period, and wave speed. So frequency can be defined as the number of wave crests per second. And the units for this are hertz. And a hertz means, by the way, the symbol for hertz is HZ. And it means one over second. So how many waves there are per second. And when we say per second, that per second means that it's seconds on the bottom. Period is sort of the inverse of this. It's the number of seconds per wave crest. So it is measured in just units of seconds. So to highlight what um, the significance of what we're saying here, we're saying the number of wave crests per second versus the number of seconds per wave crest. So those is, they just kind of switch places. And because of that, we can express this in a mathematical equation that looks like this. Frequency, so the symbol for frequency, we can draw as a squiggly, or just a lowercase f. Sometimes it's drawn a little bit more squiggly-ish. And um, for period, we can use capital P for that. So the frequency is one over, let's use the right color, 1 over, uh, here we go, 1 over the period. And just to make sure that it makes sense as far as the units go, this would be units of 1 over seconds, and 1 over seconds is the definition for hertz, so that works out. We can also write this another way. You might recognize that if we were to just flip both sides of the equation, which you're allowed to do in algebra as long as, you, as long as you do the same thing to both sides. Then flipping the left side, we get one over frequency. Flipping the right side, we get P. The bottom line is that they are inverses of each other. So let's take a look at an example. A student holding a rope raises her hand up and down two times every second. Determine the waves A, frequency, and B, period. So you should add this example into your notes. And let's take a look at the language here two times every second. So that means two per second. Let's draw that over here. That means two every second, which means two hertz. The period of this is going to be period equals one over the frequency, or the inverse, which is one over two hertz which is 0 0.5. And the units um, is seconds. If we take a moment to pause, thinking that she's making two waves every second it must mean that each second is taking, sorry, uh, two waves every second means that every wave must be taking half of a second. So that two waves can fit into a whole second. Let's take a look at another example. Um, well, actually, a continuation of this example. So wave speed. We can define this as the speed of the wave as it travels forward. So you can imagine that wave traveling down the rope. And the units, as we're talking about speed, would be meters per second. There's an equation that we can write for calculating wave speed if we know the frequency of the wave and its wavelength. And you can probably figure this out just by doing what we call dimensional analysis. So if we had meters per second, I'm gonna write this a little differently here. I'm gonna write it more like this. Meters over, I'm trying to emphasize the over part. Meters over seconds. Um, what, what operation would we do to get this? We could do an operation of meters times one over second. So that would work as far as the units go. And what, what is represented by meters per second? This is the speed of the wave. What is represented by meters? This is the wavelength. And remember the symbol that we learned in class, wavelength is lambda. And the one over the second, that would be the frequency. 
So this is what we call the wave speed equation, and it's used for any wave to calculate any one of those three variables as long as you know the other two. Let's take a look at the example. A student holding a rope raises her hand up and down two times every second, producing waves that are three meters apart. This is the same example. This time I'm asking you part C. Determine the wave speed. So we know the speed of the wave is going to be equal to the wavelength times the frequency. And we determine that the wavelength is three because it says three meters apart. So that's three meters. And in the previous slide, we saw that the frequency is two hertz. So the speed of the wave must be six meters per second. And how do we get per second? Remember that a hertz is a one over second. So when we do meters times one over second, we get meters per second. Let's take a look at another example, this one involving ocean waves. Again, do this in your concept catalog. A recent swell causes ocean waves having a wavelength of 10 meters, amplitude of 2 meters, and period of 10 seconds. Draw the wave on the grid below. So um, you can see here that I have a grid set up. I labeled the axes. Vertical is the height of the wave. Horizontal is the position. And wavelength of 10 meters. So why don't we number these? Let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And put a 5 there. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So I would expect you to have the same, uh, the same diagram in your concept catalog. Amplitude of two meters. Um, let's go every two squares. That's one meter, and then two meters, negative one, and negative two. I really didn't have to put meters next to all those because I included meters in parentheses after height, as you can see um, right here. Okay, so um, wavelength of 10 meters. So let's say, let's use blue because we are doing ocean wave. And um, amplitude of 2 meters. So does that mean the distance from the bottom to the top or the trough to the crest? No, that means the distance from the middle of the wave, the equilibrium, to the crest. So two meters is going to be this height here. And it's going to be two meters going down to negative two meters. And up here, back, um, back to the crest in a span of 10, uh, 10 meters, as you can see along here. Okay, and this wave continues then. Going down to negative two and up to 20. And we can continue this. This time we're only going to get half a wave in. Right there. Okay. So we drew the wave having the right amplitude and the right wavelength. No problem. And then what about this period of 10 seconds? Where does that come in? Well, from that information, we can figure out how fast these waves must be moving. And um, I'm going to add a second... I'm going to add a second part to this, which is draw the graph or um, draw the wave one second later. Draw the wave one second later. So we have to ask ourselves then, how far would it travel during that one second? So we can use our equation. Speed of the wave equals the wavelength times the frequency, or frequency times wavelength. doesn't matter which comes first. The wavelength we see is 10 meters. The frequency, ah, we don't know directly the frequency. We're not told that. But we are told that the wave has a period of 10 seconds up here in the description. And from that, we know that the frequency is 1 over the period. So that would be 1 over 10 seconds which is 0 0.1 or one-tenth of a hertz. So now going back to our calculation, we can say the frequency is 0 0.1 hertz. And what is 10 meters times 0 0.1 hertz? 
is 10 times 1 tenth is 1 and that would be meters per second. So now this might get a little tricky but this wave is going to be um, 1 meter further ahead. So if it was um, if it was here it's going to be 1 meter over. So we're going to try to, so let's, let's do this. Let's draw in the wave needs to end up being here. And this was a little sloppy when I did it last time. There we go. So not, rather than 15, it's going to be over here. Yeah, it should be there, and then 21 over here. All right, so wave coming down like this, coming up like that. Wave coming down like this wave going up like that and going off. So do you see what will happen here? Because the wave is traveling forward with a speed of one meter per second, when I ask you to draw the wave one second later, it's going to be shifted by one meter. Let's go ahead and draw that in here. This is one second later. So for a little extra completeness, we could draw in a velocity vector and say that it's moving to the right. And um, I will close with one comment that here we are modeling ocean waves as a simple, what we call a sine wave, like we saw in the ESPN video. Ocean waves are pretty complex and um, they're often considered not to be true transverse waves, but they are sort of a, a combination of different factors going on, and sometimes they're called um, surface waves or rolling waves. So nonetheless, though, we can model them as a simple sine wave, as we've done here. Okay, so check EDU. There's a couple of, um, a few problems I'm going to ask you to do from the book for practice. All right, see you in class.